Welcome to the Sin City Social Club for Tuesday, December 1st. How that happened, we don't know. Uh, I'm Mel with SinCity.net. You guys know Sid. Hi, everybody. So um, we managed to get to another Tuesday, which is really fantastic. And, and uh, there's a bunch of us who have all done that. Plaudits all round. Um, I found a video. I was like trawling through video space. And I don't know if Mel is ready to set it up, but she is. But I, I wanted to share it with you. A, because it's beautiful. And B, um, because it's Prince. And Prince was like Bowie, quite an influence in my life. I didn't really like his music, Prince, weird, weirdly. I mean, I like some of it. How, who could not like a couple of those songs? They're just great, wonderful, boom, joyous songs. But I didn't get into all of it. Um, I just got into him. And there was something about him that really excited me. I, I was jealous of his freedom. I was, and I think the same goes for Bowie. I was jealous of Bowie's freedom. And that's my choice because I chose to be less free than them. <laughs> uh, so that's on me. Um, and I know that Prince got into a bit of trouble at the end of his career because he, uh, you know, he said some things that he shouldn't have said. And um, he, I'm sure he believed them. He, he, he was certainly not being free and liberal and wonderful when he said those things. And we can discuss those. Um, but it basically boiled down to his finding a form of the Bible that was intolerant. And um, that intolerance kind of smeared his legacy, his reputation a bit. But I want you to look at this. I gotta make you smile. Um, apart from his beautiful brown skin and his in irrefutable talent, and uh, the fact that he dances pretty well in heels. Um, I j the thing I really loved about it is that it kind of encapsulates art to me or what art is. And it's something about the freedom of childhood. You know, when you, were, you, you, you remember yourself doing, making those movements as a child. I remember myself not in as beautifully as that, <laughs> you know, falling on the floor a million times, but don't forget how that happened. You did that and how we did that, where that is part of us doing that spinning, crazy spinning and just being so, just forgetting about everything that's going on around us. And um, just carry that with you. That is you too, uh, if you want it to be. Um, but he just expressed my childhood beautifully there. And uh, the giddy excitement, the giddy hope, the giddy prayers. And, um, and I think the song is beautiful, obviously. I it, it, and, and I think Sinead O'Connor, another whew, ambiguous creature, um, but that she's obviously that if you want to watch the, her do that video, if you can bear to listen to music, um, that's one of the great video performances of all time is Sinead O'Connor singing that song uh, on camera. It's just beautiful. So it's got to be someone's birthday today. It is. We actually have two birthdays to celebrate today. Let's start with Patricia, whose birthday is tomorrow. Patricia. Hello. Hello. Hello again. <laughs> Good to see you in your apartment. Good to see you. In New Jersey or New York? I can't remember which one. I'm upstate New York. That's, uh, New York, that's it. Brilliant. Well, I don't know, about an hour and a half from Canada. Yeah. <laughs> and you're a capable fire person and your whole family is, if I remember correctly, you're, you're a firefighter. Yes. Firefighter, and nurse, my kids are in music. How yes. How can anyone forget this? How can anyone forget these things? These are crazy amount of things you do for the community. Um, well, happy birthday. And I think well, everyone should say so. Thank you. So could everybody please say so? Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Great. Last of a couple of late like marathon happy birthday. <laughs> well, I mean, thank you. I appreciate that. I'm off tomorrow. So it's like, wow. <laughs> That's fantastic. You can have some whatever people have. The chocolate Baileys is the only thing I've ever seen. Honestly, there. I'm drinking Endorian Ale right now and oh. I'll sleep in tomorrow since I normally get up at 4.30 in the morning. So perfect. Perfect. How has been how how has, was your Thanksgiving? Okay. Um, my son is on quarantine. Oh. 
he um, was exposed to a teacher that has COVID. Yeah. Um, and the co- teacher's been sick. Um, James has been fine, but it was just him and I for Thanksgiving. Um, yeah. I sent my daughter and my husband off to grandma's house because grandma lives down the road. Right. So we were going to have Thanksgiving with her anyways. So it was just my son and I, because you know, my husband was like, well, he'll be fine. Just leave him alone. I said, I cannot leave him alone on Thanksgiving. <laughs> I said, was, you he's fine. Me. He's fine. He's, you know, practicing his elbow. He was playing, you know, video games. He was fine. You know, he's good. How old is he again? He's 12. Okay. Wow. He's 12. So we talked about school and we talked about his elbow and we talked about how he feels about all this shutdown. There's like 20 of them that are in band because yeah. I guess it was the band teacher that's positive for COVID. Uh, so all of the band kids are, <laughs> are quarantined. Yeah. Go figure. The one that's the class they enjoy the most, but they're also just pumping out air every which way. <laughs> well, they have, poor kid. He has to wear a face mask <laughs> with a hole cut out to oh, put his read through. You know, that doesn't, couldn't possibly work. <laughs> yes, sir. And then he has this. Cut out the mouth. <laughs> and, then he, <laughs> and then he has this, I don't know, this piece of plastic cloth thing that he puts over the bell of the oboe. Yeah. So it's just basically a muffled oboe and clarinet and trumpet. All the instruments are oh, just. You. We'll take they off. sound like they're underwater. <laughs> they're completely <laughs> muffled. And it takes off as some kind of progressive jazz. So that's, that's <laughs> sort of take off, you know. You know, it's like, I'm like, and how do we do this the hole in through the mask thing? And she's like, well, we, he is like, we have to get a cloth mask and then cut a hole in it. I'm like, oh my God. You know, and so we had only cut it small enough for the oboe read. You know, and it's just, but it works. It's okay. It works. He can play the instrument. It may sound like they're underwater, but at least they're playing. That's what he said. <laughs> he said, at least they're playing. You know. That's true. And how, how's your little girl? Colleen is 17. She'll be 18 in December. Yeah, she's not little. Anymore. And she's preparing music for you, actually. So <laughs> Glad to hear it. Looking forward to it. And does she preparing in what sense? Uh, she's preparing. I think she's going to play at the end of December and she's preparing some music mm-hmm. and preparing to get ready for colleges and everything's online. So, yeah. yeah, I don't know what that must all be like. I mean, we've got lots of great college age people here in the club. And yeah, her play, through. they were, they were going to do a Zoom play and they all rehearsed. Everything was going well and they canceled it this weekend. Mm-hmm. After four months of rehearsals. Why did they cancel it? Because it's a Zoom play. It's a Zoom play. I don't care. I, I said, I said, why did they play? Why did they cancel it? And she said, well, because we were all going to be on stage. I said, it's not like there was 500 kids on the stage. Oh, I see. So it's a Zoom play, but everyone's on stage. And Everyone was going to be on stage with masks on, which Colleen said defeats the purpose of projecting your voice, but... She said she didn't care. She didn't care at that point. She didn't care if she had to wear a Darth Vader mask. She just wanted to be on the stage and it's gone. So yeah. Yeah. maybe they can do it on Zoom individually in their homes. <laughs> she that they were going to think of that and think about it and maybe, be use, you know, because she was cast as um, I forgot what she was. Wednesday Adams for the Adams family. Yeah. And it's like, it's gone. It's just all gone. <laughs> She's like, just start a campaign, start a, a, a one mom crusade and get it done again. But they can all do it from home if they've got the technology. I think some of the parents and I, and I asked the teacher, I'm like, can we maybe do something where they zoom their, but she said it's hard because it's, well, it's part, the Wednesday Adams was the musical, but they, they scrapped the Shakespeare. So they were going to do Shakespeare in the fall and they scrapped that. Yeah. I don't know why. Because Shakespeare. Shakespeare would make more sense than a musical, in a sense, as Colleen put it. Because she even asked Mrs. DeSalvatore, the teacher, she said, well, why don't we continue with Shakespeare and, and leave the musical alone? 
And they were like, well, what difference does it make? She goes, well, the musical is singing and you're projecting your voice more. So you're producing more spit. <laughs> you, you're, you're, you're producing more saliva. She says, so if we, if we perform Shakespeare, then we're just talking. Yeah. And so she said, it'd be easier than, than singing. So they're thinking that maybe instead of now the, because they've already practiced for months. Now they're actually thinking of doing the Shakespeare instead. And I think it was Midsummer Night's Dream that Colleen suggested because you don't have to sing. Yeah. So it'll just be voice. Right. Colleen doesn't care. Yeah. She said, mom, at this point, I'll sing the phone book if they want me to. Yeah, of course. <laughs> you know? what, what, do you know how many kids are in it? 45, 40, 45. Good number. Hmm? That's a big number. A pretty good size, yeah. Yeah, pretty good size. Well, it's 40, 45, but that, that includes the people that would just be playing in the, like, the pit, just the, the musicians. Yeah, the, the, the musicians. Your actual actors and actresses would probably be, I don't know, 20, 25? Well, I think, and this is just off the top of my head, but I think if, if the, 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 the band is still meeting regularly with weird face masks and sounding like the music is under water, then that can still go ahead. So you've got the band and then you can get all the kids on Zoom independently from their houses and just one camera to film, to, to get it all. So That'd the band is in one box and all the kids are in others. And then you've got everybody separated as much as they can be without, um, obviously the band needs to be together. You'd never be able to, as we've, we've had musicians, we have musicians in this club, we have to work really hard to sync music live <laughs> from different locations. But it seems like something that would be worthwhile for the community. Yeah. No, and my son was going to play in the band as the oboe. Because I, and, and what's funny is they said, do we have an oboist? And my, my, he's middle school. And my son was like, I play the oboe. And he was like, well, is there any other kids? And he's like, I'm the only oboe player. Oh, wow, yeah. Well, he's the only cool. oboe player in the seventh through the 12th grade. He's yeah. the only one. It's like viola players, violas and oboes. That's, the, well, listen, I think you've got a crusade on your hands. I think you can get this done. Those kids should not waste four months worth of work. <laughs> but. Well, I, I, I wish you luck. Come back and tell us how it goes. Will we will. And well, Kelly will be here December 29th. So <laughs> great to, to, to be part of that. And especially all these kids safely in their houses, singing their little socks off. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> okay. thank you very much for the birthday wishes. And like I said, I'll enjoy my Andorian ale tonight because I have the night off for once. <laughs> Fantastic. But thank you. Thank you, too. And I think we had another birthday, right, Mel? Oh, well, <laughs> another birthday. birthday. What is going on? Our next birthday is Gail. Gail's birthday is also tomorrow. Hello. Gail, happy birthday tomorrow. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to me. Yes, it's oh, I'm excited. Let's all can we all join in and say happy birthday to you? Absolutely. Happy I love birthday, it. Gail. Happy birthday, Gail. Happy birthday. 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 That's so cute. Brilliant. How, how, how are you, Gail? How are you doing? I'm really good. And I have to tell you, since you're talking about Prince tonight, I was on a flight uh, where I, a long story of how I was sitting next to a sound, uh, lighting engineer who goes around with various stars. He had worked with um, Lady Gaga and he was working with Josh Groban at that time. But he started talking about the most talented people he had ever worked with. And he had done a show with Prince. And he said Prince was the most talented, amazing artist he'd ever worked with. And he said he was in a rehearsal one day and the keyboardist was playing something and Prince said, no, no, I don't want it like that. And he walked over and he reached over the keyboard backwards and played, played it the way he wanted it, backwards over the top of the keyboard. Now I'm angry at Prince. That's just too much talent in He'd one. He'd never seen anything like it in his life. And he said Prince could play absolutely every instrument. That was one of the things about him that was so extraordinary is he could play everything. Oh, yeah. So he so always remembered that story. I mean, that's just phenomenal that he could play it backwards. Anyway. Absolutely. Um, absolutely. But you know, in my original doctoral dissertation, I had a, a big sample of Prince fans. 
And yeah, they were yeah. die hard. They were very die hard. They were very devoted to him. So back in the late 80s, I sort of had a, a sort of a conversation going on with about 60 or 100 Prince fans that I was corresponding with. One of the reasons why I was interested in Prince, Prince, Prince later on in his life said some pretty awful things about um, the queer community. He was pretty, he became pretty intolerant, but just the kind of opposite of what he was in his songs and what he was saying in his early life um, about, you know, there is no him or her and that, all that stuff that he was, he was expounding hmm. back then. Um, and then he turned right around and he put a hand on the Bible and he said, look, I believe that men and women should not, a men and women only should be together and anything else is perverse. Hmm. And obviously that a lot of people were really disappointed. But what interests me is not that, because I think that can happen to everybody and that that's something that's bizarre. Who knows what celebrity does to you? What is it that may, and obviously it's not a an simple answer to this, but I'm really curious about the, what happens to us that as we get older, we sometimes narrow our world. We just get, we, we shut windows and we oh. shut windows of those in houses around us too. Why do we do that? Why do we sort of get, worse <laughs> well i mean honestly the the psychology <clears throat> research doesn't say that it says that if people get older they 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 wipe i mean that obviously you can't it's not one size fits all but more people expand boundaries i mean people become less conservative as they get older There's oh reason. that's completely different to my experience but i can uh, i love that news i mean that's wonderful. um it's absolutely been true with me um I think as I've yes to that. Yeah, I I mean I have definitely gotten much broader in my experiences and in my attitudes, but um and I think it's been true of my husband, um, who's 72. So um he's you guys are his special. special. I know you guys personally. Um, yeah. I do remember, yes, I remember we had frank conversations when we first met about religion and about con conservatism. And your values were very much to the right of, not very far, but just to no, the right I, of saying. I, I was always kind of a right-leaning right moderate. Yeah. yeah. It, um, and, and I would call myself now a sort of left-leaning moderate. So, yeah, yeah. you know, not a huge thing, but but um, definitely have become more open. And but part of it is life experience. So I guess if your life experience doesn't lead you to a broader, more diverse group. I mean, like I have my own nephew slash niece. This is where the gender mixing uh, language eludes me because he was born my nephew and he's uh, actually um, gender, uh, uh, he's they now, he's uh, gender fluid. I, I, yes. I cannot remember that. But um, I've, you know, my whole family have been very accepting of him. Uh, we all got together. It was about a year ago, and I was very proud of my sons, who just were the same to him as they always, always had been. Or, um, you know, everybody was cool. And um, but when you've had that experience in your own family, I think it does make you appreciate more the diversity of experience and the and the different things that people carry around inside and. Um, the scary things they have, and you met him, him, her. Yeah. We got together in a hotel and played cards. You back in the mid '90s, and yeah, a, um, a very, very introverted, contained. Probably didn't say ten words to you the whole night. Yeah, and I, and I, come to understand that that was just a lot of feeling unaccepted as he was, bottled up inside. So. I've really appreciated the conversations on here uh, because it's helped me understand. I, it's so hard for me to say them for one person. Um, that's, that's, it's a language thing, you know, but it's, it's helped me understand them better than I do now, than I did before. And that's really been helpful to me. Uh, I, when to be honest, I don't think the language thing eventually will matter very much. I think, it'll find its place. What it, I think what it is now is really just respect. And it's just using and going out of our way psychologically to say the word that we just don't think of first is- Right. Um, right, right. Well, and that's why I struggle because I mean, I'd say, well, my niece, except that 
she wants they, so niece is female. And, you know, and so you know, it's it's yeah. hard to get my head around, but yeah, but we're a, trying, we're trying really hard. Yeah, but, but that's what it's all about. That's sort of, that's yeah. that's a really fun way of looking at it. Otherwise, it all gets very torturous and complex. Well, it is. And one of my first experiences was when our good friend Carrie came out uh, as a lesbian. Uh, you knew that at the time, um, Carrie Ville. And um, that was one of my very first experiences with someone close to me uh, in that kind of an experience. You, you were having the whole conversation, and I've listened to several nights of it, about what love is. And I think love is acceptance. I think it's, it's embracing individuality and um, being there for people when they're going through difficult times, uh, which that definitely was for her. Because when she came out, there was a lot of rejection. And as a matter of fact, she came out to me in a letter because she was afraid that I was going to not want to be her friend anymore. Yeah. And um, she was working at Paramount that day. And I called her on the phone and I said, um, I know you can't talk, but you should have known better. Of course, we're still friends. You know, I mean, I was just shocked that she wouldn't know that. But um I think it's really important, you know, when you love someone to reach out in a kind of caring way and embrace who they are. And, and if who they are changes, see, that's what's hard. I think that's a difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Because we all have the right to change our mind. Yes. That's, yes. That's what, I mean, and that's kind of where we're at. And I mean, you say that people have, if who experience these things, accommodate them and tend to they it changes them but i think of people like you know famously dick cheney who is a vice president here in the united states had uh, a, a queer daughter yep. and he was pretty uncool about that <laughs> at least his public persona was pretty uncool yeah. about it. yeah I, he didn't mention what he thought of his daughter i'm sure he loved his daughter very much but it was weird that he had you know he he had a gay, gay daughter and he was massively gay bashing at the, at the same time on the well, well and i hope he loved her i mean i've i've heard of parents rejecting their children when that happens and i think that's just really sad um i can't even imagine rejecting one of my children as i'm oh, sure you couldn't i don't think anyone here could it just seems to be, that would be very weird uh, but it happens so well in any case get that, that for you an authoritative from an authoritative source that people actually get more what their opinions and horizons widen as they get older um because i'm kind of hoping that happens to me and um and, and always happening to me and i think, uh, it, I think it absolutely has what's that i think it, you absolutely have grown and i mean i i've known you 27 years i think you're definitely a, a more uh, um, a, um, open-minded and yeah, yeah. And I, I mean, I think you've, we've all had a lot of growth, um, um, and so you know, I mean, so I suppose there are people who don't, but um, hopefully they're the exception, not the rule. Yeah, hopefully. Um, so anyway, what and, and happy last week birthday to you too. So thank you, and Terry Farrell, wherever you are, it was her birthday the day after mine. It always is. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Well, it's wonderful talking to you. Thanks, and thanks, Gail. everybody, for the happy birthdays. So. Thanks, Gail. Happy birthday. Thank you. Happy birthday, Eve, to both of you. Okay, next we're going to go to Krista. I think this is Krista's first time. Hi. Krista. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> A lovely smiley face. Thank you. How are you? Where are you? Much more importantly, how are you? I'm good. Um, I'm in Wisconsin. Oh wow! You've had all sorts of things happening in Wisconsin. Oh yes, lots of all interesting kinds of excitement been kicking off there in the last few weeks. My my. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to watch the news anymore. You're just done. Um, You're like I'm done. Excitement, I'm sure, for the people, the people of Wisconsin, is like no more about our state. Oh yeah, please just leave us alone now. We're done. We voted. We're good. Just stop. <laughs> you have a lovely looking house. Where, where, where are you? Um, it, is it in the country or in a, in a town? In the city. I'm in the capital. I'm in Madison. Okay. And do you uh, live with a family or your uh, your or roommates, friends? Nope, just me. You just do it all by yourself. How have you managed that? I'm a strong, independent woman. I do it myself. So. <laughs> okay. 
I buy that. I totally buy that. <laughs> Whole, this whole COVID thing is just because it's been months now of aloneness. Oh, it's been pretty lonely. Um, I decided in June that I was going to quit my job during a pandemic. Wow. So I was unemployed oh. from June to October, so that was stuck at home. Oh my goodness. Nothing to do with so far. <laughs> How'd you get by? Um, I actually started watching DS9. I'd never seen it before. <laughs> That's hilarious. I'm not done yet, so don't tell me how it ends. I'm not done. Okay, yet. all right. <laughs> I've managed to avoid spoilers. I don't know how, but I've managed to avoid most of them. There is that. Yeah, you. It's very hard to avoid them. Like if you go online and start messing around, you'd be like, "Oh my goodness." Oh yeah. I just don't look. I don't look. So when it comes up, everyone, I'm like, "Oh my gosh, the founders are the." <gasps> and people are like, you didn't know that? No, I didn't know. When, when did you, where are you now? Whereabouts are you? First, second season, first season? I'm in season five. So the last one I just watched was uh, Dr. Bashir, I presume. Oh yeah. <laughs> Very fitting. Very. Oh, good, good. And how did you find us? Uh, I actually have friends. I went to the Star Trek Las Vegas last year and I met this guy there who lives in England and he made fun of me because I've never seen out of all the series, I've never seen DS9. He goes, well, that's my favorite. You have to watch it. Okay, sorry. <laughs> what, what was the job you just decided to quit? Why would, what was that all about? And I've been a teacher in daycares for about 10 years and I just decided I couldn't take it anymore. It was just too much. And I thought, well, this is the highest I'd ever reached in my career. I'm like, oh, I'll be able to like help the teachers and make a difference. and. How many, how many children were there? Um, there was about 78 children in the center. So it wasn't too big, but there's a lot of kids. That's a lot of youth. <laughs> That's a lot yeah, of they're young. All, they're all six weeks to five. So they're all little teeny tiny kids. Oh, <laughs> well, you have expertise. You're obviously going to be able to find a job whenever you want. But I mean, perhaps not exactly when you want, but within a few weeks of when you want. And, I um, left the so field, so. I decided yeah. I was done with childcare and teaching after that. So, oh wow, and th that's a big thing. I mean, I can understand that. That broke the camel's back. I was like, I'm done. So, <laughs> so what are you going to do? What's the plan? I have a job now. I got a job. I work for a financial institution, and I process loan applications. Oh, okay. <laughs> Completely so, different than what I did, and it's boring. But I get to work from home. You've moved and from. I school. kind of enjoy it. So, Giving adults. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's like dealing with children. Adults are pretty similar sometimes. You have to use the same tone of voice like, oh, we don't do that. Nope. <laughs> and are you enjoying your new job? I am. Yeah, I like it. It's a little lonely because I don't ever talk to anyone in person, but that's okay. Do you, have you ever met any of them? Apart no, the I've not even, I mean, I've, I've met like the supervisor because I had to go into train for two days. So I've met a few of them, but most of them I talk with there's not even a picture of what they look like. So I kind of just make it up in my head that this one guy's married and he's got two kids and this other lady lives in her mother's she's basement. Cool. And she's very unhappy because she's always grumpy whenever I ask her a question. So just make up their <laughs> life stories. It's fun. That, that's <laughs> quite a lot of fun. That sounds like something my wife would do. She would do exactly that. She decides about people <laughs> around of their Zoom is. She has like all kinds of opinions of them because of what the, what's behind them. It's like, oh yeah. And then you take one little comment and they're like, oh, they must hate me because they worded it like this because it's just they're chatting with me. So I don't know their tone of voice. So they must hate me now. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Are you glad that the whole election thing is finished? Is it like, is it, you can relax? Can the state Oh, change? yes. My parents are very conservative and they make terrible life choices. <laughs> but now we don't have to argue about it. So it's fine. We don't have to argue about it again. We never, none of us do. None of us no, do. let's just not think about it. It's going to be four years and it's uh, going to be better, much better. So it'll be different and it'll be, but we're done on this sub. This chapter is closed. Oh, um, yeah. I was super excited. I told my sister, I was like, yay. And that uh, the day of the election, my sister actually had a baby. So wow. Well, congrats. I haven't got a meter yet. It's my very first niece, but I haven't got a meter. Oh, wow. Gorgeous. Well, you're not going to meet her for a bit, I don't think. So it's, no, it's my, where my mom's trying to work out where we can just like, do something small for Christmas maybe, because everyone in my family has met her, but all my family's in Iowa. So they all live really close. I'm the kid who like, I'm moving away. I mean, it's only four hours, but I'm moving away. <laughs>
what 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 is your thing what is what do you do you have a like you go you, when you dream about what you kind of do and you've got a lovely house on the beach or whatever it is that you do <laughs> what are you doing are you painting are you reading are you doing computer work or what what is your sort of passion that you do one you know if you had an alternate universe and you could go i would just be doing this right now i actually i cross stitch Oh, wow, fantastic. I actually just oh. finished, I can't show it to you. I finished an entire blanket. So those five months of unemployment, I made 30 quilt squares and they're all alphabet letters and they're Care Bear letters and it's for my niece. Oh. It's the blanket my mom made for my sister when she was pregnant with her. So I remade the blanket. What a beautiful gesture. It took a that long time. I'll have to, when I get it, I'll have to send you a picture. It's really pretty, so. <laughs> Please do. Where is it? Is it being is it being treated or something? Something happened. It's with a quilter because I can do the squares, but I cannot take the sewing machine and do straight lines. I'm like I spent too much time on it to go crooked. I just didn't want to mess it up. Up at the last bit. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. I do have one thing I'm working on. I just finished this one. I don't know if you can see who that is. Oh my goodness. But it's Wesley Crusher and Picard. It's for my friend's Hanukkah gift. So. Oh. Fantastic. I'm gonna make it so she can frame it. <laughs> Are you gonna get it just in time for Christmas? Do you think they're gonna get well, it? Well, she's in time? Jewish, so for her Hanukkah gift. So. <laughs> I, I beg your pardon, but uh, <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> um, okay, yeah, wow, that's great. When, um, obviously, when this whole thing comes to a, 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 an end, a happy end, probably sometime in the summer next year, we hope. Um, what is the first thing you're gonna do? Ooh, I'm gonna yeah. hug lots of people. Someone blows a whistle and goes, oh yeah, that's a good thing. Oh yeah, so, so much hugging. <laughs> what a great idea. And I'm not a touchy feely person. I don't like to touch people. Like my, this is very personal, but my mother was abusive growing up. So she didn't hug us. She was controlling. She was not a nice person. So we, I don't like hugs, but now that I've not been able to hug anyone for eight months, I just wanna hug people. I just love oh. people, I miss them. <laughs> And I'm, I, I spent a couple of weeks at the, back in March talking about, or maybe April, um, talking about what people thought of their mothers, which was kind of an interesting time. Might come back, back to that one day, but it's always interesting <laughs> to hear relationships are. Um, yes, get out and hug as many people as you possibly can. Um, oh, yeah. That's the thing. And I, hopefully that changes you into a huggy person from now on. Oh, I think it's going to be. I think I'm going to be definitely a huggy person. <laughs> got it. It's got it. Hugs are good. They're good for all of us. I, I think guess I really thought about how they make you feel, but they do just make you feel so like comforted. Just that yeah. hug before I was like, oh, I don't like it now. I'm like, I could just use like 20 of them right now. I mean, we'll probably knowing us, we'll probably go from this, you know, the one end of the extreme to the other and we'll be over hugging. We'll be like, come on guys, I need mean, it's enough. <laughs> no like hug. awkward side hugs here. Yeah, no, we're going full hug here. <laughs> no hugging on the subway. Come on, come on, guys. It's too much. You can't hug and walk at the same time. Yes, I can. <laughs> oh, that's great. Well, listen, <laughs> it's lovely to get to know you, to introduce myself to you, and and, and for you to get to know our, us. Come on back as much as you want and come and chat. Oh, definitely. Today. I have to send you the picture of the blanket. So mm -hmm. I want to see a picture of the blanket. Um, I've only seen can... like the preliminary pictures. Like she sent me one today of them lined up, and it looks so pretty. <laughs> Perfect. Well, you're going to have a lot of people who also, by the way, we have lots of talented artists here who all do all various kinds of things that are all associated to what you're doing. So oh. you can discuss it all in the chat bubble when, when, when you show us and everyone will be curious to know what you did with this and how you did that and where this came from and other than that. How many times did you stab yourself with a needle? Too many. Too many. <laughs> oh. It's a, such a pleasure to meet you. I'm really glad. Yes. You. Well, thank you for this. Thank you. It was good to meet you. All right, we're going over to Portia next. Hi. Hello, Portia. Good to see you again. Good to see you. Did you have a good weekend? We had a terrific weekend, thank you. That's yeah. That's good. Um, Do you have a good weekend? Oh, sorry. No, tell me what you were saying. I was going to ask Mel if she had one too. Oh, good. That's much more important. Okay, I good. did. There's the answer. <laughs> we overbuilt it. <laughs> what did you do, Mel, by the way? Um, we decorated for Christmas. 
and which I always do the day after Thanksgiving. Um, this year, the nieces decided we needed to give, go all in, which means a lot of extra work for Mel. But wow. and uh, you have thirteen nieces, isn't that right? Eleven. Thirteen nieces and nephews. Yeah. So nine nieces and four nephews. And they love <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot. Yes, it's a lot. Uh, they're good though. How 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 was your weekend portion? I worked, so it was it was okay. We got snow. Oh, is that the first of the year? No, it came last week too, but then it rained the next day, so it didn't stay very long. Right. And did you work on Thanksgiving as well? No, uh, we were closed on Thanksgiving, so I had it off. Is that is that, is that a robber? Someone entered the house. <laughs> the cats knew you were talking about cats, and so they're like, "I need to get in that room." <laughs> That Sid's dissing cats again. I'm gonna eat his face off. What would you? What? What are you looking forward to doing when the minute this all ends, when the referee blows his whistle and says the game is over, you may all go back to your lives. Um. Well, we talked about concerts last time, but I was actually today thinking about how last year was like the first time I actually went to the movies regularly. Yeah. So I wouldn't mind going to see movies. Like I, for the first time, like. I got to see like Alien last year for the first time on a big screen. I got to see Blade Runner for the first time on a big screen. I got to watch, um, uh, what's that re space? Um, that, Wait, no, 2001, no. Space yeah. Oddity? I got to see that on a huge screen for the first time. It was amazing. So I, I would like to continue doing that. What kind of theater do you live nearby? Because they, they're just doing the best movies. Yeah, do you, I, I, well, it's, at the mall, but the owners, the owner likes to like mix things up and they do these, now I'm not gonna remember what the events are called, but basically they do these like one or two night showings in addition to the normal movies where they like show like special, like things that are anniversaries or I also saw like Meet Me in St. Louis. Um, I got to see several like brand new animes and then some older animes that they like played. Oh, which reminds me someone on the Discord, um, Satoshi Khan, watch his stuff. Like watch other stuff too, but Satoshi Khan, you need to How watch How do you spell it? it? S-A-T-O-S-H-I. K-H-A. What? K-H-A-N. Nope, um, S-H, I mean, sorry. <laughs> S-A-T-O-S-H-I. And then- Khan Khan is K O N, sorry. Okay, Khan. But no, um, he he died very like not super young, but not old. He was in his forties, I believe. He only got to make four movies and a TV show, but watch them. <laughs> I will on your recommendation. We had uh, I love those uh, kind of wild events they have at some theaters, um, some cinemas. Um, where they do weird, we watched Jaws um, on July 4th, because I think it was a July 4th movie. And uh, so it's now traditionally become a kind of thing you watch on July 4th. And I have to tell you, it is brilliant. It's a brilliant film. It lasts, it stands up, it does not look hokey. The acting isn't old fashioned or weird. Spielberg was a genius when he made that film. And I loved Aliens and I, I like a lot of really popular films. I don't like pop music so much, but I do like pop cinema. Um, like like Raiders of the Lost Ark and, you know, Star Wars, the original ones. I'm kind of not interested in the new ones very much. They don't work for me for some reason. Do you like the new Star Wars? I've only seen, um, of the new ones, I've seen some of the TV shows, like the cartoons that they had a couple of years ago and then I saw The Force Awakens, but I haven't caught the other ones. Yeah. Um, several people messaged me and said specifically, you need to watch uh, Tokyo Godfathers because it's a Christmas movie. Ah. <laughs> so. Looking for that. Um, yeah, I don't really, I think I'm, I think it's because I'm getting old. I think the cinema, the movies are probably just as good, if not better, I don't know. But I, I love the, uh, the first three Star Wars and I'm confused when they say they're not the first three. <sighs> But they are, <laughs> and then, then, then and these ones are just seemed like 
Yeah, I don't know. Nonsense. Storytelling isn't as good. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Princess Leia was my first crush, so I get your. I understand. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And uh, I mean, Han Solo must have been just about every boy's first crush. <laughs> they, they probably wouldn't admit it. Um, but it, and it's um, the thing that happened. I think that those. I mean, I'm, it's a star. We talk a lot about Star Trek, but I want to talk a bit about Star Wars because it's kind of interesting to me. I, it, is a great franchise. I'm not going to say that it isn't, but um, I don't think George Lucas is very good at telling stories. I, I just don't think he's good at it. I thought he was good at it for the first three ones because he kind of used this whole analogous Joseph Campbell vibe, which was really very good. And he had some good help around him, but when he kind of writes the scripts on his own, not very excited. Um, so that's what I've, just, I've said it. Um, so I'm never going to work for George Lucas. It's not going to happen. I've blown it. <laughs> no. He's not in charge of Star Wars anymore. <laughs> He's he not? Nope, he sold it to Disney. Yeah. When did he it's sell Disney. Disney? A while um, ago. Yeah, episode, um, the, the prequel, the first. Oh, okay. So I can still get away with saying those, those, those ones that were made, those first pre prequels. First yeah. Mm -hmm. The last three were not him. So, and then the the stand the standalone solo. And Maybe I should watch the last three because I I kind of lost interest and didn't watch the last three because I just went I'm just blank. But I will get back in the saddle and watch the last three. You can do it. I think I can you do it. I can do it. Um, so Porsche had, wanted to share. Um, so Rose found. Oh yes, Rose you found it. Come to haunt me. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you got yeah. warned. So unfair. Yeah. Well, you know what happened? Did you make it? Yes, yeah, several of us have made it. Well, you know, it's not terrible. It's, no, it's, it wasn't terrible. It's what you did. I was at university, obviously, in in London, university in London. I I, I didn't spend all three years there. Um, I we were living on just nothing like all kids. I mean, we had no money. And what we could make was that. And that was what, the, that was the point. It was like, if you have absolutely nothing, make this and you will just about kind of satisfy yourself and you've sort of had nearly a meal, but it is, <laughs> it is like Monty Python, you know, it's a Monty Python meal. Spam, 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 spam. I'd actually never had spam. That's the first time I tried spam. So wow, that's brave. It is dog food, you know. It's just humans. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it was fine. I'm actually going to. My stepdad was away, so we're going to be trying it again. Okay, don't, don't do yourself. <laughs> make something better than that. That is the, that. I mean, you know, you left college. You're done. Those days are back. There, they're behind you. The rear, rear view mirror. You don't have to pretend that you're just totally totally broken you're just licking the sidewalk with sustenance oh, <laughs> one step up from that um that was what uh, and that was actually a heartfelt recipe I, I just didn't realize of course because i'm dumb that it was in a book and it would come back to haunt me at some point again and again and again especially that since then i've actually started enjoying cooking and learned a lot about it so yes that is my shame and I don't it recommend. Fine. <laughs> That's very <laughs> kind of you. That's very kind of you. I'm not letting that. I'm really glad it's spent. It's off the screen now, so people don't go. I'm going to try doing that. Don't. It's a waste of three and a half dollars <laughs> to make that meal. <laughs> don't I think, do it. I think four of us tried making it. And did anyone make it? No. I mean, it's going to taste the same. Whoever makes it. Assume. I think so. I think uh, I'm not good with numbers. So my score is basically, would I tr eat it again? I'd eat it again, it was fine. Like I've yeah. definitely <laughs> eaten. Um, and then uh, I think we got three out of fives from two people. And wow. uh, oh, Laura, uh, Shannon and Janina are the other people who made it. And Shannon did not cook the spam and she gives it a big thumbs down. <laughs> you need to cook the spam. You can't not yeah. cook the spam. Dog food is just flavor, but it's not flavorful unless you cook it. <laughs> Actually, they're, they're, we have spam in England quite a lot. I don't know if you have it in the States, but it's a big deal in, in England. Well, it used to be when I was growing up. 
everybody had spam. So it was the cheapest thing you could get in a supermarket, meat in a can, and it did the job perfectly. Um, although I don't know what meat it was, and I'm still not sure to this day. Um, did, you, did you did you read the side of the can? I haven't read the side of a can. Of I I did not. <laughs> mm, I, cut, I had to cut mine open with a knife. Oh yeah, That's, it, then, the thing know, totally popped it, off. That is the proper college experience. You cut it open with a knife. You get it out with your fingers. <laughs> Yeah, you've got to worry when you look at the side of a can and it says ingredients, meat. <laughs> okay, that's what it is. Thank you. Thank you for letting me know. <laughs> yeah, we have spam fritters in the UK. They, they cover a spam in batter and they deep fry it. But, they, I, you know, they do weird things in the States too. They like to fry everything here. We do. Everything. I was at, there's an expo called... Um, the Big E, no. Yes, in, in, in Northeast America, where all the big, the North, the new, all of New England arrive and they set up. And New Hampshire has a place, and Maine has a place, and Rhode Island has a place, and Massachusetts has a place, and they all provide the best, their, their food. But everything, I mean, apart from there's some things which are delicious, like the clam chowders and the lobster rolls and stuff like that but everybody's frying every, everything. And, and it, they take real pride in it. Everything's deep fried. They were doing deep fried martinis last time I went. What is that? We had to have one. And it was <laughs> just revolting. <laughs> it was horrible. <laughs> they deep fry everything. We had a turkey leg that was deep fried. And I swear, the turkey leg was the size of a football. I felt That's like one of the... Right. That's not right. That's not how you should do it. <laughs> That's wrong. That's not. No, I mean, right as in, that's what I would expect to find there. <laughs> well, I was fascinated, like from an anthropological view, I was just like fascinated by this. And then there's a big room where they just sold stuff you see on infomercials. You know, those things you never buy because you never remember to take the number, but you always go, that's a really great idea. I must buy one of those plastic things that does that to oranges and opens nuts and you can feed it to your pets. But I saw them all under one roof. Uh, that was quite something. It was like a museum of rubbish. <laughs> Total rubbish. Yeah, the only times I've, I, I don't fall for the infomercial thing anymore. Do you, have you bought anything from an infomercial? No, but I also don't have a credit card. <laughs> so even if I wanted to, like I, every once in a while I'll see one, I'll be like, that looks good, but I do not have a credit card. So <laughs> very um, wise young person. Well, I think I've probably taken up more than my time. I'm so yes, sorry. Occasionally someone but... says, I have had enough. <laughs> no, I No, I'm joking. I'm I'm joking. <laughs> I sometimes oh. catch myself talking so much. I go, right, this has got to be stopped. No, I'm sorry. But no, no, it's always lovely talking with you. Thanks for well, listening to me talk at you. No, but... you have wonderful stories. You're a wonderful conversationalist. <laughs> <laughs> you have a safe holiday if I don't get to speak with you. Thank you, you too. Thank you. Thanks, Portia. Be safe. You too. All right. We're going to go to Ryan, who is a new aunt. Hello. Hello. I'm a first timer. My brother and his wife had a baby on the 20th. Oh, oh my goodness. He is the squishiest of potato babies. That is and a squishy. I am very proud. So I had to share pictures with everybody. <laughs> that is peach. Peach with, with a face. No. They live in New Hampshire, so I can't go and squeeze him like I want to, but um, he's just the most adorable little thing in the world, so. <laughs> um, and how many days old did you say he is? Uh, he was born on the 20th, so he is, um, gosh, uh, what day is it now? It's the- Yeah, exactly, it's like 11 days old. Yeah. So uh, we got to FaceTime. So this was our first picture together. <laughs> oh. Welcome to the planet, young fella. 
as you can see, I'm a stunning conversationalist because he he fell right asleep. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you, I, that, it looks like maybe they, that his parents hit the jackpot. They can, you can get the, what, the very sleepy ones or the very wakey ones. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's got his night and days um, confused right now. So he's, uh, they're having trouble keeping him awake right now. <laughs> Oh, that's my brother, my little baby brother. Cute, cute. And his baby. He's up and at him at a young age. He's got a family going already. Yeah. Well, he's um he's in his thirties, so um. I guess they, that's. Uh, just everybody looks super young to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like he's sixteen with a beard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's too much. And uh, the story with this is that's a little, um, that's a Falcor plushie. Um, my mom had specially made uh, Falcor from the Never Ending Story. Um, oh. And uh, the story behind that is my brother and sister in law referred to Finnegan as Falcor in when he was in the womb before we knew whether it was a boy or girl. Um, so it was always baby Falcor, <laughs> the whole pregnancy. Um, and uh, so my mom had had the uh, the little Falcor. What a groovy little toy! What a perfect little thing! And it's about as long as he is. <laughs> so. He's gonna grow. He's gonna grow. He's just like a big head on a poop bag right now, but he'll just get yeah. bigger, and bigger. <laughs> My brother says he poops like all the time. Yeah. <laughs> he couldn't and believe so how much he poops. He was not prepared know. for it. So. <laughs> yeah, I could be talking to you right now if I was a baby. I'd be just pooping away without yeah. really having an eyelid. Yeah, yeah, I have two. I have two. And um, my brother just did not believe me when I told them how much they, you know, I was like, you're going to have to, like, however many boxes of diapers you have like double it because <laughs> you're gonna need them so that's too too sweet you've got that's really wonderful oh what's um what's how what has your has your because i know you're, you're a journalist and you have um your world has been whew, under siege for a few years and we've talked a bit about that but is there a palpable sense of hope lifting of direction possibly like you know we can get back to just being anonymous again because you, well, you never really wanted to be like remember how the president used to point out the journalists in the crowd and say look at those disgusting people those are <laughs> those are terrible people I mean he said things like that I don't think I'm misquoting him um, it's not something I would do to a group of people even if I thought they were frankly disgusting but he generally did that and that was the press so I would assume press quite like anonymity <laughs> right now. It's like, I just put my name to my article, but you don't need yeah. to know about me that. I mean, I feel like if we're not pissing people off, we're not doing our jobs. But um, I mean, honestly, um, we're in the middle of starting something pretty big here with our school district. Um, so um, our... Uh, Mel knows a little bit about it. We were chatting about it the other day, but um, basically the the gist of it is the superintendent of our school district um, resigned suddenly on November 13th out of nowhere. Um, and they didn't give us any reasons. I requested the separation agreement from the district uh, when I received it, they gave us a redacted version of the agreement, which I was pretty sure wasn't above board. Um, so like there was like sections blacked out. And this is a person that gets public funds for <laughs> their salary. Yes, I'm not sure um, they can. Can they? Well, so we we ran it by our attorney and the attorney's like, well, probably not. So I gave we gave the district a chance to to give us the full the full agreement without 
sending in a formal request. They denied us and I asked them for, um, you know, the full terms of, uh, you know, how much money he was getting paid out. And they said that wasn't public record. Well, you know, again, public funds, public school district. Mm -hmm. So I sent in the formal Freedom of Information Act request yesterday. So now they have three business days to um, respond. Um, and I mean, even if it's determined that they, you know, don't have to give us all of the information that we're requesting, um, we're being really upfront about all of this. Like we're publishing articles and editorials about the whole process, about everything that we're doing. So our readers know <laughs> what is happening here. And, um, you know, there's a dialogue there. Uh, people see what's happening. They are engaged in what's happening. Um, like our social media metrics right now are kind of through the roof on this. And even if we lose, we kind of win on this because the district isn't being transparent. Yeah, and um, I'm not a lawyer, but I don't think they can hide that information. Yeah. So, um, but anyway, the district doesn't really like me right now. <laughs> So. You. you're going to be a hero. Yeah, that's really really great i mean I, I this it does sound incredibly fishy um, ryan left out that she found out and reported that he gets his full salary plus what is it ten thousand dollars a ten thousand dollar lump sum uh upon so he's getting his full salary uh till the end of his contract which is june 2021 um, which, you know, is only like, what, six months, six, seven months now. But still, I mean, he was getting paid $171,000 a year. Um, so, I mean, that's not a, that's not chump change. <laughs> um, but then he's going to get a $10,000 lump sum payment um, at the end of his contract. Plus, he's getting um, full benefits for him and his family um and i mean it's it's a lot i mean they're spending a lot of money plus they're paying now an interim superintendent but the district couldn't find the money to cover the cost of a 35 percent increase in insurance premiums for that, its, that's your angle isn't it that's for the its, uh you know staff so it's that, like that is the point you, that's that's what corruption is if indeed it's true and that all this is true it, that is that is really quite something and that's a pretty awful situation for, for the the people of your district um and i hope they care i'm sure you're getting as you said your metrics are off the charts so you're, you're probably getting a lot of interest in this story and probably a lot of local television interest and probably national interest at some point it'll get dragged into the political mire at some point it'll be whether or not he was a republican or a democrat <laughs> it's going to become all potent ammo for someone what a brilliant what a brilliant story to be researching I'm, i i wish you huge luck with this i hope this i, I would love to know your how you're going to approach it but i that would probably be a really bad thing to explain to 100 people yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's uh, we're going through um, audit records over the last like three years, and it, it's it's a lot of research. So, well, Ryan, we want to keep. I, I want to keep up with this story. I want to know where you're going, what's happening. Will you give us some relatively regular bulletins? Um, yeah, yeah, I can definitely do that. I can definitely keep Mel updated with. I mean, she'll know she's here. <laughs> so really fascinating. Um, really looking forward to hearing more, and I hope, I hope everyone's it's all just fine and it's all above board. But if it ain't, I hope you get them. <laughs> That's what I hope. I mean, honestly, nothing would make me happier in the world if I'm just being super paranoid and it turns out to be nothing. But um, I'm sure it's not. I think there's, I think there's something big going on. So. Yeah out of courtroom out of courtroom and police information you do not get redactions and for goodness it's a sub judice situation which you absolutely cannot see sources and methods etc but uh, not for just you know guys of school <laughs> for publicly yeah. funded school you just don't get to redact and i know that it's the culture now 
you know, so I just lied to you. Yeah, it's it's her. It's one of many big stories that she's had to follow this this year. Yeah, Our just this year. <laughs> yeah, it's been a lot. Good luck with it. Yeah, that's really fab. All right. Thanks, Ryan. Aunt Ryan.